My Legal Club provides full legal support when you require it. Enjoy savings and rewards all year round when you don't. You do not need to be a member of My Legal Club to benefit from free legal advice from our highly recommended specialist solicitors. When you or a loved one requires legal advice and a solicitor, we can help you in every area of law. We also offer a unique alternative. Sign up to our free trial and you will receive up to 25% off legal fees, 15% off legal documents, £20 restaurant vouchers for leading UK restaurants, savings and rewards with leading UK brands, a free online will, free dash cam and much, much more. As an example of how we help our members, they have saved on average over £500 plus by using My Legal Club for personal injury claims compared to many solicitors who deduct 25% of your compensation. If you or a loved one needs legal support, contact us at mylegalclub.co.uk for free consultations and no obligation quotes with highly recommended solicitors. Sign up to our free trial to receive all the free discounts and our membership benefits. Welcome to the MLC show in association with My Legal Club. My name is Sean Rogers and I'm your host. I'm delighted to be joined today by George Cunningham, NLP trainer and leading business coach. This is a four part series on nutrition. Last week we looked at strategies and ideas. Um, this week we're gonna look at how to have a healthy mindset for well-being, nutrition, and generally keeping good habits. Um, George, um, welcome to the show again. Thank you. Um, I know you help a lot of people in your professional capacity um, who struggle with the relationship with food, mm -hmm. uh, or they might want to lose weight, uh, either for a particular event or just generally, um, and they might be struggling to do this. Can, can you take us through uh, the most common problems that you've seen uh, and explain the contributing factors behind sure. these issues. Absolutely. I mean, one of the most common problems, I think, is the life we lead at the moment. It is, you know, people are so busy uh, that we tend to forget to eat. We'll work through lunch. We'll work through, some people work through tea as well, uh, you know, up till eight o'clock at night. And then all of a sudden, bam, you're so hungry and um, you just eat what is the quickest, simplest thing to shovel in your mouth. And uh, it's, it's just some bad habits that people have got into. Um, you know, that's probably the biggest problem that I uh, identify with, with, with my clients. You know, it is quite simply just the bad habits that they picked up. And the thing is, people just simply don't give themselves enough time to get prepared and to to uh, take care of themselves. So like a plan, is, it, is it a failure to plan then or is it just getting into the habits of pre-planning the preparation? Do you know what I mean? I think with, with a lot of people it's a case of I'll just do this, I'll just do that. Uh, it's nearly one o'clock. I'll, I'll just, I'm guilty of it myself actually. Uh, well, I think oh, it's nearly lunchtime but I just want to finish this email, I just want to finish that, I just want to do that. Before you know it, it's three o'clock. Uh, you're feeling absolutely ravenous and you're throwing whatever it is down your throat. And, you know, that's, that's one of the biggest problems. It's just the bad habits that we develop over the years. Have you ever had people come to see you who it's actually more of a kind of um, an issue with the sort of relationship with food, if you like? I don't know whether it might be... Um... Comfort eating and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if, we, if we think about it, food changes the way we feel. Um, it does change our internal state. Chocolate, you know, everybody likes chocolate. Well, I say everybody. Most people like chocolate because it actually does change your internal state. It uh, sparks off the neurons in certain sectors of your brain. And uh, so people will eat that to, to give them a bit of a sugar rush, a bit of a, a, a change in their state. And that's okay. I mean, chocolate in moderation is fine. You know, a little bit here, a little bit there. But when you're starting to eat a bar of milk tray or whatever it is, or a bar of um, you know dairy milk, isn't it, about this big, uh, then that becomes a problem. So, and some people can do that in a sitting. Um, they're replacing sensible food with something else. They're actually using that as a crutch to support them uh, for emotional issues when there's better ways of doing it. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, when I started to um, see and speak with you, 
um, you know, personally, it was interesting for me. Looking back now, I can see it more clearly that actually probably a lot of the reason I was kind of comfy in, in a way mm-hmm. was one, trying to get kind of energy into me and chasing the energy side yeah. of it. Yeah. And then the second thing was I was actually sort of changing my state. So yeah. I think like by filling my stomach up, if you like, yeah. um, it changes the blood pumping around me and you get yeah. that kind of rush almost to a certain extent the relaxation of just going ugh yeah. I now can't move yeah 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 <laughs> um, and especially at you know in one of the earlier shows with Jimmy talked about one of the main things I've done is completely change what I do at breakfast time yeah. to try and make sure that without it being unhealthy and without it being high on calories to try and get as much energy yeah. into me in the mornings as I can mm-hmm. and not go chasing it because I think uh, as an example, I don't know if you're going to have a load of coffee in the morning, yeah. as an example, and then you're going to have sugary foods in the morning. You're going to get a spike, but then mm-hmm. you're going to have a crash, and yeah. then you're going to be chasing it yeah. all day. Um, and I know myself that there are there are certain times in the day where actually I can change my state now mm-hmm. in, a, in a different way, whether yeah. that be some of the work we've done in terms yeah. of like mindset, but even if it's just a case of having a five-minute break. Yeah, yeah. And trying to get some fresh air in that period and mm-hmm. just, you know, we've done some work on it before, but even change your breathing. Yeah. And yeah. I think, you know, that's the big thing with yeah. smokers, isn't it? And yeah. that, I, you know, since some of the work I've done with you, I think, you know, going off on a tangent, but why not? <laughs> um, the people who go outside smoking, actually, they're getting a break yeah. from their work or the house or whatever. They're, com- they're changing their state. Yeah. And they're changing the breathing patterns. Yeah. And they're actually getting some fresh air as well, which sounds <laughs> mad. Uh, but actually 99% of what you're breathing in is actually bre- is fresh air. Um, they're also, I think, in, in that instance, that it's the movement round. It's that they're changing their state by using their body, by actually moving the body changes the internal state. Um, so, And the other thing, actually, I think it's worthwhile pointing out is that uh, 75% of the time, when we think we are hungry, we're actually just thirsty. Okay. And this is one of the things that I do with my clients is I bring them back in touch with what is happening in the body. Because, you know, somebody might say something to them and all of a sudden, bang, I've got to have chocolate. They go, they comfort eat. Um, and it, they think they're hungry. Actually, they're not. It's just to change the internal state. Real hunger, real hunger comes on over about an hour period of time. We might wake up hungry in the morning. We might not. Um, you know, quite often it, you know, I'll wake up in the morning. If I don't actually feel hungry, I won't have breakfast at that point because I want to wait until I actually feel hungry. Now. Most of the time, as I say, 75% of the time, we're actually just thirsty. So this stuff here, um, which really probably should be in a different coloured cup, but uh, this this is water, plain, pure water. Yeah, for those on the podcast, George and I have got blue (laughs) glasses, which obviously, uh, if you don't know already, with me being such a massive Liverpool fan. Yeah. Um, And and, and not that George has that elite, but I kind of, I suppose, bully him into making sure that he follows that blue cups are out. I have actually been in a restaurant before and sent blue plates back on Derby Day, to be fair. Oh, Lord. (laughs) But the water itself is is what we need to mobilise the resource that we've laid down. So we lay all these um, th- these resources, some people call it fat. I like to refer to them as internal resources. And uh, we need the water to actually mo- mobilize that, to get the energy out of it and to wash toxins out of the system. 75% of the time, we're not hungry, we're literally just thirsty. So I'm Everything's subjective. Obviously we have to be yeah. careful on, on a series of shows like this because no two people are the same. Yeah. Now, Let's say I come to see you and I say, look, George, I'm not exercising as much as I want. Um, I'm not eating as well as I'd like. You know, I really want to have these high energy levels. I want to live a healthy lifestyle. But do you know what? I feel feel like that's a million miles away. I just, I've tried before. It's not worked. Um, And it just seems like it's going to be painful to me, to be honest. How do I kind of change that to see it in a more pleasurable way and something that's going to stick for the long term? What I actually do with clients in in that sort of instance is just ask you to stop for a moment. And those of you listening on the podcast, providing you're not driving, um, you know, if you're driving, keep your eyes open, please. But if you're not driving, it's safe and convenient to do so. Close your eyes for a moment and think about how you would like to be at your ideal shape 
at your ideal weight. We're all governed by our genes, by our genetics, to be a particular height, a particular size, a particular shape. I would love to be taller, but I'm not. My genetics capped me off at the height I am. And uh, that's the great thing about genetics is that we are genetically uh, programmed to be a particular size, shape and weight. Now, if you stop for a moment and you think about having had the best year yet, so between now and this time next year, you achieve your ideal weight, your ideal shape. What would that look like? Stop for a moment, close your eyes and just picture that inside your head. What would that look like standing on a beach a year from now, just at your ideal shape, your ideal weight? Notice how healthy you look, how radiant you look. Notice the energy that you've got. Notice not only that, but how things have changed in your life itself. Things have gone brilliantly over the next year. And if you stop from behind and take a little step inside yourself at that ideal shape, the ideal weight, notice what it feels like in the muscles, what it feels like in the skin, what it feels like actually to inhabit that body at your ideal shape, your ideal weight. And as you do so, take that image inside your mind and double the size of that image, double the size of that feeling and just squeeze gently with the finger and thumb on your right hand. Double that image, double the feeling, know that this is what it feels like to be your ideal shape, your ideal weight. Enjoy that moment. Then release your finger and thumb, orientate yourself back to wherever you are, open your eyes and just make sure you haven't crashed the car. <laughs> <laughs> you were told not to close your eyes if you're driving. Um, but in terms of how do we keep on track, we've got to have a goal. We've got to know where we want to get to. And it is so important. You know, so many people come to me and say, I want to lose three stone. OK, well, that's dead easy. We'll chop your leg off. You've lost three stone. Simple <laughs> as that. You know, it's got to be much more um, sensible goal than just that. So it's thinking about your shape. It's thinking about your size. When we look at the fashion industry, uh, you know, the fashion industry's ideal used to be um, the body of a teenage boy. Um, that was what you know, the fashion industry demanded. I'm not quite sure uh, why that should be the case. It has changed actually over the years and we're now seeing you know, much more healthy looking models and in fact some older looking models as well, which is brilliant, um, you know, coming back into, into modelling into the fashion industry because they're showing real world people. But if we go back over the years, back in the uh, late 60s, Twiggy was seen as the model of the day. Prior to that, it was Diana Dawes. Prior to that, we had Wrong Marilyn Monroe. Absolutely, you kids won't have a clue who these people are. Look them up. But Diana Dawes was a size 14 or 16, I think. And uh, Marilyn M M Monroe was a size 12 to 14. Twiggy, of course, was a, you know, a six or an eight. Um, but fashions change. But each of those was seen as a beauty of their day. Now, again, in terms of thinking about their genetics, they were governed by their genetics to be the size, weight and shape they were. Um, we need to get back into that. You know, we're not necessarily governed genetically to be enormous, um, you know, extremely overweight. That is not a predisposition of our genetics. Uh, the ideal shape and weight is predisposed in there. Get back to that. Have that as a real goal to focus on. And um, that keeps you on track. It just means that, you know, we're working towards that and maintaining that. So I've made a start. Okay, yeah. so I'm now um, exercising and maintaining quite a healthy relationship with my food, nice and balanced. Um, I genuinely feel like, say, I'm onto something that I think can make a lifestyle Mm -hmm. for me and not just a short-term change and personally i'm still yeah. on that journey as you can tell if you're watching this on the camera but um i feel like i've made huge progress over the last mm -hmm. couple of years sort of on on these aspects of my life um but it, it wasn't like a short-term fad or anything like yeah. that so what would your advice be to people who um you know go through the good and the bad spells if you like how would you keep 
the good habits? And then secondly, how do you avoid that complacency when things go well? Because that was something yeah. I really struggled with. Yeah. That um, I don't want to live like a monk. Yeah. We Absolutely. all want to have a nice, healthy balance. But even yeah. so, I'd probably find a bit of complacency because I've had some good progress. The complacency sits in. Yeah, yeah. I think, again, with that, it, it comes back to this little anchor that we set up for your ideal shape, your ideal weight. When you keep that in mind, it keeps you focused on where you want to be going to. And one of the things that I always do with my clients is we are working with them to change the relationship with food. So... This isn't, you know, what I do is not a diet. It's, you know, it, it's not saying you can only eat this, you can only eat that. Um, diets, diets are effective. They, they will help you lose weight initially. What we do is we teach them a long-term uh, strategy to maintain their ideal shape and weight. And one of the biggest things there is that no food is actually forbidden. Because if you deny yourself something, what happens? You know, you deny yourself chocolate and you're saying to yourself, I mustn't have chocolate. I mustn't have chocolate. I mustn't have chocolate, have chocolate, have chocolate. <laughs> you know, and that's all you focus on is the chocolate. So by saying, actually, you know, I can have anything I want, it means that they can have a little bit of chocolate in moderation. It's funny, I actually substitute, yeah, I've got a real bad sweet tooth, totally. Yeah. <laughs> And um, I substituted, I, I found a bit of a belter actually, which will make, when I when I first got recommended this, I was like, yeah. I'm never doing it. I can't stand dark chocolate. Right. I can't stand lint dark chocolate, right? Yeah. But I got a tip off about mint intense. Honestly, right. I'm telling the world now. <laughs> lint, but it's mint intense. And I'm, right. it, it's a step down from mint aero. Right. But... Um, as a little substitute, it is really, really, it's, it's brilliant. It's quite yeah. low calories. Yeah. It's not bad on everything else. Yeah. Um, and I've found that I can have a little bit of that after, say, tea or whenever I would yeah. normally have had a dessert or whatever yeah. it be. Yeah. And that's a perfect example for me where that's kind of like a lifestyle change for me yeah. in that I'm not not having a dessert. I'm not not having chocolate. Exactly. It's really, it yeah. genuinely is dead tasty. The yeah. only problem you've got is make sure you don't eat the whole bar because <laughs> they're massive. So you've got to make sure you're yeah. disciplined in terms of portion and size. Portion size. And, and this is where the other thing that I work with clients on is getting them to be mindful of what they're eating or how they're eating. Because, and, and this comes back to the bad habits again. Oh, I shovel, on. like I shovel, yeah. I eat at a rapid pace and speed eating. didn't manage my portions. Yeah, speed eating is not the way to go. Um, really, if, if, if you think about it, somebody spent three hours making, you know, the Sunday roast for you or whatever. We'll use that as an example. And in fact, we had a client uh, a few years ago who she would spend all Sunday morning with her daughter preparing the roast. And they've got a very large extended family. 20 would descend upon the house like a swarm of locusts on S Sunday lunchtime. She'd be serving up in the kitchen, putting the, uh, the, the dishes out. And uh, when it came for her to sit down, half of them have already finished. Um, You're and the, the, <laughs> absolutely, you know, the, the, the enormous plates and they're on to dessert. And, um, you know, it, it's just, it, it was ridiculous. They were eating far, far too much because they were all speed eating. So what she's actually done is she made the point of actually using serving dishes. It's a great way to go and it helps with portion control because that way people can help themselves. They can help themselves to a small amount of this, a small amount of that have a little bit. If you need to go back and get more, then have some more. The thing is, though, when we are eating really slowly, when we're mindful of what we eat, things taste differently. Try this again. Um, so what, what's your favourite meal? What's your favourite food? Uh, I love this bit. Oh, that's hard, I get it? to eat everybody else's. It, it, go on. Do you know what? In all honesty, funny enough, my, my real favourite yeah. is like, you know, weekend is, is to treat myself to a chippy tea, right? Okay. So, so, so my right. real favourite would probably be, um, my, my favourite one-off would be sweet and sour chicken with, I'd go, I know everyone's going to shout, I go boiled rice just because I'm trying to put a bit of balance in there and I'm fine okay. with it. Everyone's going to be shouting, going, why aren't you getting fried rice as a treat? Yeah. But I go boiled rice. But actually in, in the week, I would say, probably my favourite meal for speed that I've found works for me is when I'm rushing around, I just put a bag of veg in the microwave, mm -hmm. 
some sweet potato fries yeah. and then fish okay um basically like salmon or cod or something like that and that's what i'll okay. three four times a week that's what i'll so, eat tell you what then try this for a minute thinking about your your go-to speed meal which is your uh, veg, your sweet potato fries, yeah. and your cod. That's like 20 minutes, yeah. Okay. So think about it being there on the plate in front of you. And again, those of you who are listening on the podcast, if you're driving, please just sort of you know do this another time. If you're not driving, you can follow along the instructions. Close your eyes and just picture your favourite meal on your plate. Just see how beautiful it looks, the colours of the vegetables, the colour of that cod, the wonderful, actually, the aromas, the, the steam rising off it. And what I want you to do is to pick up your knife and fork in your hands, take a tiny little bit of the cod, a tiny little bit of that um, sweet this potato. This is full on Alan Partridge, this. Sorry to break the Alan rhythm Partridge, on this, but I'm That's <laughs> okay. Pick it up, put it in your mouth, and then... Put your knife and fork down and chew. Chew really slowly. Notice the textures. Notice the flavours. Notice the temperature, actually. Notice where you taste it on your tongue. So that as you chew on that tiny little bit of card, that tiny little bit of, maybe it's breaded card, maybe it is that wonderful seasoned uh, sweet potato fry. Notice the sweetness in there. And as you're chewing really slowly, the texture's changing. You've got the crisp out of the wonderful, flowery, flavoursome interior of that sweet potato. And again, as you chew, notice where you're tasting it all over your tongue. And then swallow that bit down, pick up your knife and fork again, and take another tiny little bit of cod, tiny little bit of that vegetable, pop it into your mouth, and then put your knife and fork down again. And again, chew. And notice the flavours. Notice the different textures this time. Notice the temperature. And just as you do so, as you're chewing that, you'll notice that actually the flavours change. The more you chew, the more the flavours change. Things get sweeter. It's to do with the alpha amylase that we release in our, in our saliva. It changes the glucose, sorry, it changes the starch into glucose. And that is actually absorbed under the tongue. So it changes the flavours. Everything becomes sweeter, much more flavoursome. Now, was that probably one of the nicest bits of cod and sweet potato that you've had <laughs> it's in years. It's mad that I haven't actually had exactly. anything in front of me and I am starving at the moment. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's mad how you can actually yeah. genuinely taste it. You can it, taste yeah. it. And yeah. the thing is, you're absolutely right, no cod was damaged in the making of this infomercial. <laughs> uh, that is how we should eat. Now, how My many prize us... was for the YouTube videos doing it. But... <laughs> Hand on heart, though, how many of us um, actually eat that slowly? Oh, no, not at all, no. And I've, the answer is we don't. Um, when we slow it right down, it does two things. Firstly, it gets you to really appreciate the flavours, really appreciate the food itself. Secondly, it actually gives the body's um, uh, nervous system a time or a chance to actually catch up with what's going on. As you're taking food in, you're then able to give the signal to the brain that says it's okay. You can stop feeling hungry. And it takes about 20 minutes, half an hour for that to fully shut off. By eating really slowly, you cannot overeat. We guarantee you of that. Um, little thing we were doing... Um, I was part of Paul McKenna's um, assistant team many years ago in London, and I was assisting on a weight loss seminar down there. And this is the sort of stuff that Paul teaches. And at lunchtime, uh, everybody you know goes off and they're eating their food and what have you. And um, I had to go up to the up to the gents, and it was through the bar upstairs. There was a gents actually outside. You of picked the... the gents through the bar, did you? Well, I had to because <laughs> the hotel, quite sensibly, eighty percent ladies on this particular seminar. So they converted the gents outside the seminar room into one of the ladies. What a brilliant idea. Come on, guys. This makes sense. So I had to go through the bar. And I'm looking around, and there's all these people there who were obviously on this, uh, this seminar, all sitting around uh, just chatting away. And the waitress is coming around and saying, uh, have, have you finished? 
and she's looking really critical and she's taken these these plates of pasta away and they're big mounds of plas pasta and she's are you, are you sure you finished it was everything okay and she's taken these away and then she's gathering them up and i'm watching as she goes in and the the chef in the background's going what's wrong is everything okay? <laughs> so on my way back from the loo, I, I caught the, uh, the the waitress and I said, you do know it's Paul McKenna's weight loss seminar today, at which point she went, oh God, not again. They do this every time. That explains it. This yeah. is why nobody's eating anything. Um, and it comes down to eating really slowly, enjoying the food. You will eat a sensible portion. And that's one of the keys. So actually to help you keep on track and to get back on track, when you find yourself shoveling in again, turn the phone off, turn the radio off, do not eat in front of the television, eat at a table and just concentrate on the food. Enjoy the flavors, enjoy the food itself. And this client of mine for whom all the family descended suddenly found that as the weeks went on, in fact, the, the week after she started to do this, she halved the amount of food that she put out in the serving dishes, and they still had warm up on Tuesday. She halved it again the following week, and they still had warm up on the Monday. Um, and you know, she just basically quartered the amount of stuff that she was cooking because they weren't eating it, because they were helping themselves to what they wanted, rather than piling the plates up. Something that you know, I wanted to pick your brains on is, um, I don't know about other people, but certainly for myself, you know, no one's got any issues with a short term, whatever. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't say falling off the wagon because I don't want to call it that. Yeah. But going into going into some short term um, eating, not exercising, yeah. whatever yeah. that the short term. <laughs> but for me, one of the problems was sometimes a day could become a week. Yeah. A week could become a month, and then yeah. I could go through a couple of months where. Um, I haven't been exercising, mm -hmm. haven't been eating as well as I've been doing, haven't really been spending as much time really focusing on it. Yeah. Um, and certainly that's something from the past with mm -hmm. me. Um, and then in the past when that's happened, I would feel like I was going to struggle for momentum yeah. to get back on because you would go, well, I feel like I've undone a lot of good work. Mm -hmm. In part, I feel guilty and all of a sudden things feel very difficult yeah. what would your advice be for people who go through spells of find themselves in that sort of situation yeah, yeah. quite simply forgive yourself it really is allow yourself a bit of slack stuff gets in the way life gets in the way of life and you know we can have all the best intentions in all the world to you know stay on that that route of you know, the exercise regime, they're very sensible eating and, and all this sort of stuff. Things get in the way. And when they do, just forgive yourself and get back on it. It's not your fault. It's just stuff has happened. So keep in mind that lovely little anchor that you set in when you've got that goal of yourself at your ideal shape and the ideal weight. And even if it's just a little bit that you can do, there's certain things we can do each day to get a bit more exercise. You know, with the best one in the world, not everybody can get to the gym all the time. So, you know, just parking the car a little bit further away from the entrance to the supermarket means that you work, you're walking a little bit further and you're pushing the trolley back a bit further as well. It's all exercise. Um, you know, when the weather gets a bit better, taking a little bit of exercise in the garden, doing the garden, stuff like that, will again, gets you out of the house, you're getting a little bit of exercise and you're seeing good results from it as well. So it's this whole idea of recognising that, you know, it's just a, a mistake we've made. Forgive it's yourself funny, we were talking and get on a, back on it. We were talking on a previous show about there, uh, because like, you know, I, I maybe didn't take the kids out as much as I probably should have done because of weather, because of yeah. laziness, because of probably not being in that good a mental state. And then um, I remember one particular day, regardless of wind, rain, whatever, <laughs> we went out coming. on probably the worst yeah. day to ever go out, and I realised just how much fun puddles actually really are. Yeah. Um, not actually in the footwear that I was wearing, that was kind of the aftermath, but yeah, yeah. lesson learned. But Absolutely. actually how much fun puddles are and how much fun kids can have in them. So it was interesting that just getting into those kind of habits, yeah. not just benefiting the kids, yeah. but actually 
stopping them tearing apart absolutely my rooms yeah get, getting them out getting them in the in the, the the weather itself you know out in the fresh air well you know. I, I think it's going to be different <clears throat> for everyone just yeah. very briefly from my own point of view i think the two two big things for me were uh leverage and lifestyle yeah so i very much kind of try to take a view that how do i want to um eat and exercise on a monthly yeah. basis that i think um is completely doable yeah um i think in the past i'd set myself it was too too big a goal, unrealistic for that to be long term. Yeah. It wouldn't have worked, um, and I've pretty much been able to stick to that from sort of almost a lifestyle point of view. And there's certain yeah. things that yeah. I did. So like, I made sure that in me um, in my property, I didn't have anything in there that I didn't want to be in yeah. there. And that sounds obvious, yeah. Yeah. but in your kitchen, you're going to have so much, yeah, whatever it could be. Yeah. There is a temptation there for you, which there's naturally not a need for that. Mm. And then I kind of. Did little things like which saved a lot of money. Yeah. So the night before I went to bed, getting into a good habit of making like a pat lunch or whatever yeah, for the next yeah. day, and then I'm not rushing out at lunchtime yeah. to buy something. You're not yeah. seeing the queue in Tesco's, for instance, and then yeah. going to Greg's as an example and getting. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. by, by literally taking yeah. something in with you, you're almost obliged to eat it, aren't you? Because yeah. you've gone to the trouble of bloody making the damn thing. Absolutely. Um, and I think Matt and you gave me the idea of just putting some like healthy snack bars in the car. Yeah. Some healthy snack bars, maybe in your coat that don't yeah. melt because they're not chocolate or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. But also, if you do find a spell when you just start hungry, yeah. and even little things like I used to put like fruit on my desk or whatever, yeah. um, and you can, that really worked for me from, say, I'd say a lifestyle point of view. Yeah. And then the key thing for me, though, was leverage, and it'd be different for everybody. Yeah. Um, I think for me, it was twofold, in that one of them was my kids. Yeah. Because, um, you know, unfortunately... I lost my mum a lot um, mm. earlier than um, I think I sh definitely should have done. Yeah. Um, and that was through absolutely no, she didn't drink, she didn't smoke, she, mm. didn't, she didn't do any of these things. Yeah. So it came as a massive, massive shock. Because you've got this yeah. person who you think lived quite a healthy life and yeah. looked after yeah. themselves in that, to that extent, but then you lose them early. So I was like, well, I don't want to give myself any regret so you know yeah. i don't want to contribute yeah, yeah yeah do you know what i mean yeah in terms of the kids not having me and me not being with the kids sure. if things happen they happen but yeah i certainly don't want to contribute to it and the second thing was actually me, me mental health and that i got into such a such a bad situation um which you know yeah, yeah. you were a big part in helping me out with that that actually the leverage for me really was if i don't stick to a number of different things in my life a bit like a jigsaw yeah um, the leverage is that I'm scared yeah. of what that would then. Yeah. Because I don't think you ever complete the game. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's just ongoing. So I think leverage and lifestyle would be, for my own perspective, if someone's listening to it now, yeah. I think that that for me took the pain away. Yeah. So if it comes to like exercise and eating, I don't really see it as a painful thing anymore. No. I almost see it as a pleasurable thing because those things are kind of pulling me. Yeah. Not, I don't know how to explain it. Not pushing me yeah, if you yeah, see what I mean. yeah so i'm not having yeah. to push myself to do these things yeah and then over time like we did in the first the first show that you and i did it, it you always create a habit that yeah. then becomes a lifestyle absolutely so, and let's be honest if i can do it anyone can <laughs> absolutely you know, let's have it right yeah um, and i think you know the, the the thing you say there about um you know leveraging your lifestyle it's the pull towards where you want to be what you want to do that's got to be strong enough to drag you to that you know, that's really important. I heard someone say that if you're not careful, your brain is willing to sacrifice long-term well-being for short-term happiness. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, that could be alcohol at the weekends, drugs yeah. at the weekends, yeah. could be um, could be absolutely anything. Yeah. Any form of escape could be gambling, could yeah. be... Um, could be probably more healthier options yeah, in terms yeah. of escape. Um, what do you do in terms of, because I think in a weird way, everyone probably needs some form of escape. Mm -hmm. um, what are the alternative ways of changing our state in a healthier way? Kind of what would your tips be? To change our internal state, there's, there's three ways that we can change our internal state. The first is changing our body in terms of movement, in terms of what we do with our body. So, um, you know, 
thinking about it this way, anybody who has uh, worked in an office or um, you know worked uh, in a, a, a situation where they, they've been exposed to PowerPoint, death by PowerPoint, okay? Think about it for a moment. You're there, you're in a meeting, 147 PowerPoint slides, <laughs> um, only three of which relate to you, and you're sat there really, really bored out of your mind. Uh, in that state, try and have a creative thought. It's really, really difficult. Or an inspirational thought. It's really difficult. So if you move your body, if you actually you know, stand up, move around a bit, stretch, put your head up towards the ceiling, big smile on your face. And uh, if you want to, those of you on the podcast, actually try this you know, at home now. Literally you know, breathe in a full lungful of air, put a big cheesy grin on your face, look up at the ceiling and keep that cheesy grin on the face as, you know, as much as you can, smile with your eyes and try and have a really depressing thought. It's probably gonna be more difficult to do that with a smile on your face. So changing our body changes our internal state. So that's the first thing to do. Um, so if we are finding ourselves, you know, getting back into old ways. And that fits in with the comfort eating, doesn't it? Because it, it tastes nice and then yeah. all the blood starts pumping around. And... Absolutely. So, you know, think about things that make you feel good. If it is get up, walk to the window, enjoy the view or, you know, see the birds in the garden. We're currently in February. So, you know, we're coming into spring and the, the birds are beginning to sort of, you know, go into their proper springtime plumage and stuff. There's beautiful things to see out there. So that that in itself can change the way we feel. So that's the first thing, you know, using our body, moving our body to change the internal state. The second thing that changes your internal state is the pictures you show yourself. And we all show ourselves images on the inside. So memories, memories come to mind. Most of them, you know, we do in the way that we do them, whatever that natural way is for each of us. And they might not even be real. They may not even be real, absolutely. Well, they might not be exactly fa uh, factual. Well, they're not going to be, yeah. yeah. That's the thing. We delete, we distort, we generalise information. So if you think about a really embarrassing moment that you've had, and I know we've like all Like fake had... eating card sweet and potato chips <laughs> and veggies <laughs> 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 on YouTube, yeah. You know, we, we've all had, you know, embarrassing oh, moments. Oh, you've got your own back on me there for uh, all years so, yeah. of sin. <laughs> So if, if you think about, you know, whatever your embarrassing moment is, think about the way you do it. You know, are you, uh, do you have a picture that goes with it first of all? Hopefully you probably will have, and that'll probably make you feel, oh God, did I really do that? Think about though these things, are you looking at it through your own eyes or are you actually seeing yourself in the image? Is it panoramic or is it bordered? Is it bright or is it dim? Is it black and white or is it colour? Does it have sounds that go with it? You know, are those sounds loud or are, is it eerily silent? So think about the way that you do it. If, for example, you're doing it through your own eyes and it's like you are there in that embarrassing moment, what happens if you literally take a moment to step out of that image and watch it as if it was to be on CCTV. And if you want to, turn it black and white. Drain, drain all the colour out of it. Uh, put a little border around it. If you want to, you can make it a pink feather boa. I have no idea why, but it, it's getting a smile on the face, so it's probably going to be different. And all of a sudden it looks different. Turn the volume down. If you find yourself, you know, you're saying things that you wish you hadn't said, well, do it in a silly voice, you know. If you were to do it in Mickey Mouse's voice, would it have the same effect? And by the way, if you're going to do Mickey Mouse's voice, you always have to start it with, oh, Pluto, and, <laughs> and then you speak like that, and it's just really difficult to you know, find an embarrassing thing about it. So you know, just allow yourself to, to be silly with it, and it, it changes the internal state. So that's the second thing that changes the internal state the pictures that we show ourselves and how we do it. Uh, the third thing though that can change our internal state is the stories we tell ourselves about the situation. The stories we tell ourselves that, you know, this has happened, that means this. Does it really? 
You know, this particular thing has happened. Does it really mean that I'm a bad person? No, it just means that I've made a mistake or two. You know, I've fallen off the, the wagon in terms of my eating. This means, oh, I, I, well, I, I might as well eat everything that comes in front of me. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I don't think my brain's moved on you from know. two million years ago, to be fair, <laughs> when, whenever brains start, first start being developed. Because, yeah, something I've worked very hard on is probably I would subconsciously make assumptions yeah. too often. Yeah. And then the other thing is always probably expect the worst or predict the worst, as an example. Yeah. So like your, your reference in there... You know, that kind of a mindset, um, whilst it, it, in some ways in the right circumstances might be able to prepare you, a vast majority of the time doesn't put you in that great a place. And that's yeah. where you do look for various forms of escape, yeah. I suppose, yeah. because you're putting yourself in that vicious circle. Yeah, and, and this again, that this is why I say, when you find yourself falling off the wagon, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It just means that you've made a mistake. So forgive yourself and go, ah, this means I've recognised that I'm now eating unhealthily again. So I must eat more healthily again. So it's allowing that forgiveness and it's those stories that we tell ourselves. You know, what does it actually mean to us? So allow yourself to, to find a different story. Brilliant. Thank you so much, George. Um, okay. That's it for this week, everyone. I can't thank George enough. Um, also, thank you for Jimmy, um, who's played a big part in the four-part series on nutrition. Um, if you want any further information um, on the services that Jimmy and George provide, please give us a shout. Um, we'll be putting out um, all the links on social media, uh, but by all means get in touch with us at My Legal Club as well and we'll put you in touch with the guys. Um, we'll be doing a follow-up with Jimmy and George soon where we'll do a question and answer um, session and we've got some great shows in the pipeline, so please make sure you subscribe. Um, if not already. In the meantime, as always, please share and spread the word about the MLC show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please hit us with a five-star review and remember to check out the products and services at mylegalclub.co.uk for you and your family. Uh, more importantly, please stay well and take care. The Business Services Club is a unique business-to-business -business brokerage. When you need a service for your business or you want to compare your existing business, get in touch for free and no obligation quotes. We have created a specialist panel of commercial partners to support your every business need. We will provide you with free and no obligation quotes via the Free to Access Business Services Club. As an example, you may need EL, PL or Professional Indemnity Insurance quotes, Forensic Accountants, Self-Employed Bookkeeping, Funding, Working Capital, Interest Only Lending with no personal guarantees, Employment and HR Support, Web Development, Training, legal advice or even online marketing. No matter what you and your business require, we will meet your needs. Free up precious time researching and analysing new or existing outsourced partners via our one-stop business solution. See how we can help you and your business via businessservicesclub.co.uk.